Hello, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Now I'm going today to do a, um, an art journal page and I'd like you to join me to follow along with the process and really talk in depth about the techniques that I'm using and um, the way I do things because very often I'll do this sort of project as a video, a, sh a short video, a time lapse, uh, a reel and one of these. But I'd like to go through it and take some time over it and explain what I'm doing as I do it. Uh, for those of you who are maybe a bit newer to art journaling, scrapbooking and things, anything really mixed media. So one of the focuses today is going to be this resist pace. Now, anything that I can link down in the description below, I will do so that you can find them. Um, so just check there. I've got UK and US links. Obviously, if you're not in the UK, anywhere else in the world, just click on the US link. So the resist paste is from Cosmic Shimmer and I've got a brayer to apply it to. Now with this I'm not looking for a perfect impression but I'm going to use this first and that will just mean that anything that anywhere I put this resist paste I'm going to keep uh, a reasonably clean background underneath so the colour of the paper. If you're working on a craft or a black or any other colour paper that's the colour that you're going to find is showing up. So um, now I'm going to use these stamps. Now these are, the majority of the stamps are all from Textures, my own range. Um, these are from one of the very, very first collections that I had, and that was the Textures um, Reflections. In fact, a lot of the stamps I'm using today is from Reflections. Now with the resist paste, I'm just going to take a small amount on my finger and pop it onto a craft mat, so something that's resistant and I'm going to start working at it. Now this really does uh, soften up quite quickly, especially it's a warm room, so it should be nice and easy to apply. So I'm just spreading that quite thinly on the mat. Now you can stamp into this if you want to. I'm actually going to just come directly to my sheet of stamps. Now these are all individual stamps that will lift off, but I'm happy with the placement. I only want a rough um, sort of impression of the alphabet. So I'm just going to brush over each one of these stamps now, I haven't tried this before. I'm experimenting along with you. So we'll see how it works out. So you can hear the bumps. I'm using a brayer rather than anything else to apply it because this should just touch the top of the stamps and nothing else, hopefully. And let's see how much do I probably need to do the entire sheet of stamps actually to get a full background. So just brushing it on until I've used it pretty much all off and the rest I can wipe off with soapy water, a bit of uh, a wet wipe, a baby wipe, something like that. So that's all on those stamps. It is a clear kind of almost a gel like consistency once it's all spread out. Now I'm going to be careful about placing this onto my paper in the center. Just place it down and then just press down, hopefully transferring some of that resist paste in areas there. Now I haven't really thought too much about the composition of this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use uh, this half of this typewriter as part of my page, but that's about it really. So you'll get to see my thought process as well. There we go. So you can see I've got, I obviously had some ink. I don't know if you can just see that, but I did have some ink on my stamps, but that's fine. So I've done that resist, whether or not it works, we will see as we start working with paints and inks and that's where I'm going to go next. So I am just going to clean my mat because I do like to uh, do a lot of my mixing and things on my mat. So just take a wipe here and just take that all off now just so that that doesn't get mixed up with any of our inks. I don't want to have any areas accidentally resisting where we don't want. Now you don't need to heat set the paste or anything like that, it can just sit on your page. Um, it may be that by applying it this way I haven't got enough of it. We shall see, we shall see. Now something I have got here is a small piece of packaging. Now this is actually the packaging that these beautiful flowers came in. I'll talk more about those in a little while when we come to them but I'm just going to start applying some colour to my page, watered down ink, so this is Distress Oxide Spray, just watered it down a little bit there and I'm going to pick it up with my packet, you see it splashes around quite a lot, it's still quite concentrated actually, I think I might add some more water to this, I mean Distress Oxides are a really concentrated colour, that's already dripping on there so let's 
just start placing this down onto the page. By using this little packet, I can just kind of gauge whereabouts I'm placing the ink. So just pick it up in small amounts. Oh, that is starting to resist. I'm liking that. I'm just going to go with purple through the center for now. Give my hands a wipe. I don't know if you can just see, just see here the S and the R starting to resist. I like that. Now I'm not going for a Halloween look with this page at all, but uh, I've got the purple down. I'll let that just soak in for a few moments. I could add another layer over the top as well. You see where we've got these darker areas. I like that. I like the variation. So while that's drying, let's put some silver on. So I'm going to do this direct because I know that this is a muted silver. I don't need to worry too much about how dark that's going to go on and I like that I like that it has toned down the purple I've still got areas of purple I've left this on my mat because I can flick and splat some more purple but you can really see how that resistor started to work now um, let's just do a little more up here there we go beautiful okay I think I'm going to purposely heat set that now I'm, I'm really happy with that I don't want it to go any further so what I tend to do is I heat set the edges now one thing I haven't done here which I really should have done was mask off or put a piece of plastic or something underneath this top page that I'm working on just to prevent any color going through to another page but I tend to dry off the edges first to stop them dripping any further and then I'll dry the center off because these ones are right on the edge. And if you find you've got drips like this, if we just take, um, let's find myself a piece of kitchen towel, which I should have had ready really. Just dab a little piece of kitchen towel into the big blobs and that will just soak up the excess there. I quite like, I like this darker purple area. I don't want to soak up too much of that, but a little bit will just help with the drying process just just touching the corner there onto the wet areas lovely okay let's finish drying this off then while I've still got just a few areas left to dry to finish drying I'm just going to put a few darker splats of the purple down as well so this is directly from the mat with a paintbrush and just like so so then as they dry they do lighten ever so slightly more just a little bit more and again they should kind of resist a little bit so let's just oh I like that I do prefer that I love when they've just started drying and you get that kind of darker ring around them lovely now this is purely our background so don't worry too much what it looks like at the moment it's going to look fabulous later you know that but uh, at the minute it's just experimenting and playing with different colors and different mediums for the backgrounds that's where I, I really have my fun with this stage okay so I think I'm almost dry there's a little bit of dampness up here a little bit at the top here as well that I've not yet dried off I'm not really going to be working up there so let's just make sure that I'm not going to smudge anything. Yeah, happy with that. Okay. So now I need to just put this to the side. I can go and give that a wash, but put it essentially put it out of the way so that I don't put my hand in it or anything like that. Just leave that there. And let's do the next part. So the next part's going to be some masking. Now this is one of my favorite masks or stencils that I've got and it's letters again so this is all about typewriter this particular um, this particular page is going to be a typewriter writing maybe notes messages something like that so I've got another font stencil actually before I do that I might want to add some contrast in now I've got this lovely sort of handwritten script stamp here I'm going to use this I'm just going to use it in stages so if I can find myself a an acrylic block, and I'm just going to wrap this around it because I only want to use a small a small area of it, just this part. And I'm going to take a black. Actually, let's yeah, let's take a black versifying clay because I'm going to be using uh, waters and things over the top. Now I'm just going to dab that gently and just put a little on the page. I might need a bit more than that. 
lovely so just some areas and you can do this I didn't quite reach there so let's go there then just see small areas starting to appear let's do a piece over here if we can at the top here I might need to get the um, <laughs> get take it off its stamp let's do that let's just take this off and see if we can reach just at the top here so sticking to my fingers these reflection stamps are all photopolymer so they do stick really beautifully there we go so we've got a little bit more contrast in there with the blacks I could do some more in a little while so I'll leave that there but let's now do some bring some of that white back um, I love this lowercase set now I'm going to use dimensional paste this is from Sizzix I bring this out a lot and what I love about it is it dries quickly it is really dimensional it's really quite thick and heavy but it stays such a bright white which I love so I'm just taking some out of the lid because it's there it's excess I'm just going to smudge through holding my stencil down really tight and just smudge right through try and capture some letters and I make sure I taper it off towards the edge as well so you kind of get this triangle shape and I like to echo so without smudging it anymore I want to do the same up in this corner as well and again you can come back you can do some more of that later if you want to there we go okay so starting to really build that up so let's clean off the palette knife now I'm just going to put my stencil and my palette knife into uh, some warm water so they can be soaking and not drying whilst I do the rest of the page lovely now I do want to stamp this typewriter this is in four parts this stamp so this half of the typewriter I'd like to have on this half of the page now I've already stamped here uh, or stenciled some texture paste it's not yet dry but I've done some texture paste but so I don't think that is going to stand out very easily if I try to stamp on there it's not an even surface I mean the paper's warped ever so slightly of course I'm drying it so what I'm going to do today which is something I've not done for a very long time is stamp onto a tissue paper now really easy to do you do just need to get yourself a big enough block or of course a stamping platform which is what I'm going to use I'm just going to trim myself a piece of this paper down so it's a good size and the beauty of this is that once you've stamped onto your tissue paper you can cut that image out and you can lay it gently lay it over the top of any sort of stamping texture paste or anything that you've already got on your page any paints and such uh, where you, you find the ink wouldn't usually grip because of course where I've got the, the resist paste here the ink's not going to grip to it um, where I've got the texture paste that's going to cause issues with my stamp as well so let's just pop that onto there like I say I'm using a stamping platform because I want to make sure that I get the perfect image now I'm going to use probably my memento ink if I can find it it's hiding here somewhere this I think is the the wettest as such ink pad that I have at the moment I don't want to have to do too many impressions of this so let's see how many we need to do so inking that up nice and dark pressing that making sure I've got all the detail beautiful absolutely perfect that's what I wanted now this is going to be great as well because when I cut this out from the tissue paper which won't take very long you can see it's just gone through ever so slightly there that's fine that will clean um, when I cut this out that tissue paper the paper bit is going to show up a little bit white as well uh, a little bit of an opacity to it which over here is going to be just lovely so that will just sit much better over my page so let's just cut this out gently going around the edges I don't need to be too perfect because of course it is just tissue paper you might want to allow it to dry before you do this stage though otherwise you could find it gets um, a little bit smudgy on your fingers now because I've got fibers on this paper 
the image has slightly blurred. It's not really, not an issue. It won't blur any, any much further. As soon as it's dried, it'll stop wicking out. There's some fiddly parts here. So just work your way around these. Leave a slight gap if you like. Don't worry too much about the fiddly areas. We will glue those down. And then you want to take, to glue this down, we're going to use a clear glue. So something that you can brush on lightly and it will dry clear so you won't see it through afterwards. There. There we go. So there's that part out. And then just down the middle as well, of course. There. Now that is going to lay over there. And you see how that really does show up much better than it would if uh, we were doing really anything, anything else, stamping directly onto the page, for example. So let's adhere that on. Now, one of the best things to adhere that on with is going to be, let me just squeak my chair there, matte Mod Podge. Okay, this is water-based. Um, obviously, it's a sealer as well, so it's going to protect your um, the rest of your project. So I'm not going to worry about brushes with this. I'm just going to go straight in there and just put, oh, I can't do that. I can't do it on my um, craft mat, of course, because my craft mat is still wet. I'm just going to put this on the back of this tissue paper. Just dipping my finger in it there and brushing it all over. So almost making this into kind of like a sticker, I guess. There we go. Now, because it's tissue paper, if you have something that's shaped like your texture paste that we're going to be going over, um, then it's absolutely perfect to do this. So I'm just going to pop this on gently. I've got very sticky fingers now. I will have to give those a wipe in just a moment. I'm just going to use my pokey tool to flatten this out. There we go. Perfect. And you can just about see through that paper there, you can still see those lovely textured letters as well. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, now the next item is that I'm going to use are my florals. Now these are floral stickers. I grabbed them from Amazon and I thought I'd get them just to try them out. Um, they're really pretty, I really like them. Um, I can put the link down below for them for you and they are essentially they are just a sticker they're on a, a kind of acetate backing so they're not the easiest to peel off but once you've peeled them off you're able to then start placing them wherever you like and because they are on acetate they are a clear sticker hopefully you can see there that's beautiful you can just build them up so in fact, I'm wondering if you can also peel them back off just about because I don't want that stem to be quite as long as that. I think I'd like that. And you can overlay things as well with them so they're beautiful. So now I've got a pink set and a purple set here and I am going to use both. I'm just trying to work out, oh, I really like these ones actually. These are beautiful so they're very delicate, those ones. Um, I've got some... These ones are gorgeous. Some pink ones here. So what I tend to do is take a pokey tool and just from the stem, which is the part that you usually tuck away, just try to lift up the sticker from the acetate base. And once you've peeled off the corner, you can lift the rest of it up. So I'm going to put this one down the bottom here and that's just going to overlap there. And I'm going to keep working through this and the, these in the same way. So I've got purples and I've got pinks too. Um, what else do I have? This is a really pretty one. Lovely. Hopefully you can see that. I've got these florals all there. I'd like some greenery as well. So I think I might do one more there. So we've just got the greenery peeking out instead. More green than any other colour on this one. I've got a little bit of purple there. Let's just have that at the bottom there and overlapping. Okay, now I'm just going to trim the edges of these down the edges here so that nothing gets caught and it all looks as if they are coming 
out from where the typewriter is. Now I'm also going to echo over the from the other side, which is something I'll always do, is very similar. So let's just take, I want some nice delicate, delicate, a pink. That one's nice. Just a pink there and maybe then a purple as well just from the other side so anything I do one area as I said with the texture paste if I do it on one half I like to do it over on the other half as well okay I'm lift trying to lift up that acetate like I say it's not the easiest in the world if you've got other vellum or either vellum or clear stickers that will work then by all means use those so that's really subtle that one because it actually fades in to the pinks there let's see if we can find a purple, a nice deep purple. See, that's quite dark. This is pretty. They're all pretty. Yes, I think that one. So let's trim this first and then see if we can lift up this corner. The pinks and the purples work really well together, but especially with the whites and the greys that we've got going on. Should we put that? Let's put that at the top there. There we go. Okay, so we're starting to come together. Now, I like to leave white space. So there's a lot going on here. There's lots of spaces here as well though. So I think the next thing I need to do is think about my sentiments. Now I've got some here uh, that talk about create art, create movement. Uh, I think I'm going to use one of these. Uh, maybe just the word create. Should we just do create because I think that's this is actually from a cover uh, a magazine they call it a cover mount the the free stamps that you often get with magazines that's what this one is now I'm thinking I'd quite like to have that uh, white on to should we pick out the green so let's just find a nice quite a bright green I think Maybe that's a bit too bright. Let's look for a slightly darker one. Oh, I can see one. Can I grab it? I think I can. Oh, there we go. That's better. I think just white on top of that. So we're going to have to heat emboss. So that means taking my Versamark ink. And the white is going to be opaque bright white from wow so let's stamp this using the versamark ink this is a clear sticky ink pop it in the top corner just sprinkle that all over this is super super fine powder this is and as i pick that up let it tip kind of towards me make sure that that's all Okay, and then I can fold my cardstock and pour it back into the pot. There we go. And let's heat set that. So cover up my ink as well. Make sure that that's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to be cutting this out, so I'm not too worried about it being perfect. I love heat embossing has just always been fascinating to me I still don't understand how it works well I kind of know how it works but who discovered that you could get these little particles and make them melt and that they'd stick to an ink and you could create these amazing enamel effects on paper I mean who thought of that it's just phenomenal isn't it there we go perfect nice and glossy so just give that a second to cool down before I cut around the edge leaving I still got a bit of sticky on there from the last stickers that I was cutting up so leaving a slight edge around around the edge around the outline and before I stick that down and that will kind of almost finish this particular page uh, one thing I love to do I always do it let me just find it is my white ink so my white ink I like to do little ink splats so let's take my paintbrush that I use for this. I tend to let it dry on there, as you can see, but after a while it just brushes off and goes into a powder, so I don't need to worry about washing it. So I'm going to take that away for a moment. So I won't stick that down just yet. 
pick up some of the white ink with my paintbrush and splat around these flowers, around these flowers, over the typewriter a little bit, but not too much. Be good to get some, ah oh yes, lovely, good big blobs. The more you have on your paintbrush, the more likely you are to be able to get some really big splodges like so. Happy with that, I think, lovely. Okay, let's do one big splodge oh, over there. <laughs> okay, scraping off the excess because of course it's a wonderful ink. This is Dr. P.H. Martins. It's a white ink that, or paint, that I used to use uh, for calligraphy actually, because it is, it is exactly as it says, it's bright white. So screw that lid back on, there we go. I'm going to give this a wipe, but I'm not worried too much because like I say, it just dries and goes kind of crispy. And then lastly, I can just take my sentiment, put some foam tape on the back. This one's a perfect width. This is from Craft Stash. Again, everything uh, that I've used, I've linked. Most things are from Craft Stash. There's one or two that's from Amazon maybe. And just pop this on where we decided, which was just across there. There we go. Now, uh, lastly, I like to finish off my, my projects, my books. Let me just see if either of my pens are working today because they weren't last time. This one's working, so that's fine. And I'm going to frame this particular page. So I'm going to have to work here around the texture paste. I'm just doing a rough kind of doodle line. And you're not going to be able to get around everything because you've got areas like the stickers, for example, that won't allow you to draw over them. But then you've got your typewriter there. And this is just a rough line and it just frames for you the page a little bit. So a nice, fine, subtle line around there. So there's my page, lots of mess, I love lots of mess. But you've got the typewriter there with the florals coming out of it. You've got lots of splats and ink. You've got the typewriter background as well and the word create. I think what I'm going to do lastly for this is maybe die cut the word art from black. Perhaps black, perhaps another colour, I'm not undecided yet. And just put the word art underneath here in a nice big brush script. So let me grab those last minute decisions. Now don't be afraid to use black within your project, whatever it may be, even if it's card making, scrapbooking, see mixed media you often uses a lot of black for contrast. Um, but as you can see there, that word art just really stands out. That looks much better, really much happier with that now how it is. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. I used those flower stickers. I wanted to try them out with you for the first time. I need to set that aside to dry because I've got these wet splodges of white paint that absolutely need to dry thoroughly. You can see the resist paint paste in the background. That was this Cosmic Shimmer resist paste. I really love the effect of that. It's subtle, but it's really lovely. Uh, down here, we can just see we've got where we've stenciled those letters and also where I've stamped the script as well. Um, I, what I have noticed is I used the VersaFine and that did stamp over the letters where the resist paste was. So that's interesting that the resist paste didn't resist those. Maybe the um, inks and things kind of affected the resistance. Maybe it kind of the ink sprays laid a layer of something over the top of them and then you could stamp over the top. But interesting to know to play with it on another day. But yeah, really happy with that. Obviously being able to stamp onto the tissue paper made that typewriter uh, really show up much darker. So happy with all of that and um, hopefully you will try something similar. Take some of these techniques. Let me know in the comments which tips and techniques you liked best, what you'll be going ahead and using. And if you've got any for me as well, I'd love to hear them. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video and you want to see more, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And again, all the links for everything I've used will be down below. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.